Well, how y'all are? It's your buddy George Jones over at the Bergen Gun Range with my next installment on 8. I've been shooting this gun on camera. I guess I better do a review on it. Uh, and the gun we're talking about is this guy. The CZ Bruno uh, ZKM 468. This is a very cute, very elegant little 22 long rifle, single shot rifle. Uh, this rifle was brought into the country uh, in the mid to late 1960s. Um, the U.S. allowed some sporting arms to be imported from Soviet bloc countries in some sort of a trade agreement, and the little CZ started coming in. Uh, this is a very nice, very elegant, very well appointed little 22 single shot rifle that I have found to be just neat. Um, now, I got this gun. Well, I did a review on it, and I didn't like the review. And then, but I liked the rifle. So I wound up trading them out of the rifle and kept it for myself. Then I used the rifle in two different videos <laughs> and didn't bother posting a review and forgot to do the review. And then I've had a couple of subscribers leave me comments like, hey, what about the review on that rifle? You know, and I'm like, okay. So let's go out and actually do the review on this rifle. Uh, it says on top of it, the information on it is ZKM 468 Cal 22LR, and it has the CZ logo up here on top of it. And it says Bruno something or other that you can, I can't. Yeah, and it's manufactured in Czechoslovakia and has an importer stamp over here on the side. Now, this is a single shot 22 rifle. It's very interesting, very positive in its action. Most of the time when you have a single shot 22 rifle, you open the bolt, put a round in it, close the bolt, and then you have to cock it, okay? Most single shot 22 rifles work that way. This gun cocks itself on closing. This gun has a cute, neat, a pretty neat safety arrangement. The uh, striker plug back here in the back is knurled, and it has an arrow on it, which corresponds to an arrow in the bolt body. That indicates the gun's ready to fire. Beside that, there is a zero. So if you pull back on the uh, bolt plug, and rotate it, pull back on the bolt plug and rotate it to the right, the arrow corresponds with the zero, and now the rifle's on safe. And that's pretty cool. And it's also on bolt lock. So you can put it on safe, you carry it in the woods, and you snag that bolt on something, it won't open the bolt and dump your round out. Very, very cool. Put that back over here. It has... Uh, spring tension tang rear sight on it and there's an adjustment screw instead of a wedge and it has a conventional front sight post on the front of it here which is dovetailed in that's pretty cool so you can adjust it the front sight for a certain amount of of windage uh, you can adjust the rear sight for windage the tang back here the spring tang sight is on a screw and you can loosen that and adjust some windage back here. When I got the gun, someone had put a sling swivel, sling swivels on it and it pulled them off for whatever reason. I replaced the Uncle Mike sling swivel posts. And then because the rifle is so small and elegant, a big Cobra sling didn't look right on it, didn't feel right on it. So I fabricated me a little three quarter inch wide sling out of 12 ounce leather put me a little Conway buckle on it there for adjustment 
you know, and made me a little sling. Now this rifle probably doesn't need a sling, I'll just tell you the truth, because, well, you're not going to shoot anything far enough away that you need to use hasty sling. And it doesn't weigh very much. I mean, you know, it's like four and a half pounds. But when you're out in the squirrel woods, you know, it's kind of nice to have both hands free for doing stuff and you can sling the rifle up. So I put a little sling on it. I, I just think it ought to have a sling on it. Uh, we're going to shoot this guy here a little bit now. I did use this rifle in a previous video where we were testing <coughs> the old 22 ammo. Some of it up to 80 years old. And uh, it shot very good. But we're doing the definitive test on this one now, so uh, let's do it. Now, I've noticed that the ejector, the ejector extractor arrangement here, if you get a round in there and the ejector is behind the round, when you bolt it shut, it won't fire. So I've gotten in the habit of pushing that guy forward just slightly every time. And stick around in there, bolt it in, and I'm going to shoot. I've got a, uh, I've got an eight-inch. Uh, filthy avian target down there, <laughs> dirty bird, and we're going to see if I'm going to shoot five shots at it, and I'm going to shoot five shots at the little steel targets down there, and see how we, how we do. All right, here we go. Ready? Get forward slightly. Get the guy in there. Bolt that down. A neat little gun. It's just, you know, I got all kinds of guns. Typically, when I go hunting, you know, unless it's dove hunting or something like that, or upland game bird hunting or something of that nature, I typically carry a single shot. I've got all kinds of guns, and I enjoy shooting all kinds of guns. It comes right down to it. When you're packing a gun along in the woods, the least amount of gun you can get that works right is probably the right gun for me. Now my old man, he's got a 270, but he'll take his Browning A5 and hunt everything with it. You know, they shoot deer slug through it, you know, rabbit hunt, squirrel hunt. Just everything with that one gun. And he's got guns. You know, he's got guns. I'm, let's see, let's try a little, little four inch Mickey Mouse swinger at 25 yards. And that's a hit and see right there, buddy. Townsend Whalen said, only accurate rifles are interesting. But this gun's accurate. This gun is accurate. It's a very accurate little gun. CZ is a very good quality, very high-end uh, manufacturer. All right, we got one more in the five-shot string. Let's shoot the little, little two-inch air gun target at 25 yards. See how you see if you hit it. Yes. All right, let's go down there and look at our accuracy on the old uh, <coughs> filthy avian target. People ask me, Mickey Mouse target. Mickey Mouse target. Well, let's see where we're at. Ooh, yeah, yeah, we're just, just about what I expected. 
Uh, that's five shots, all in the bullseye, 15 yards. Uh, this is a very nice, accurate little gun. One of the subscribers asked, what's a Mickey Mouse target? Well, that's it right there. That's a little Mickey Mouse target. It's got two little, it's a little four inch AR-500 target with uh, ears on it. Kind of looks like Mickey Mouse. You know, the air gun targets are these guys over here. You know, that's basically, I don't know if it's a 22 target or, you know, what it is, but it comes from Walmart. <laughs> Somebody brought it over here and left it, and somebody else shot at the doll rags, and I took it back to the house and re-welded it. You know, there's our one-inch thick steel that uh, it don't even ring when you shoot it with a 9 millimeter. you got to hit something big. And uh, there's another one just like it. And these little guys that I've built and manufactured and put together, and probably need to pull that one up and repair it. I might have a bolt in the truck to fix that with. I don't know. Let's see. Anyway, that's the targets we generally shoot. But this is a very nice little rifle, and I see it as being a keeper. Uh, you know, I'll buy a gun, or one of my supporters will loan me a gun to do, and I'll research the gun out. And one thing and another, bring it over here, produce a video with it, and I shoot a lot of guns. I get to shoot a lot of guns. It's, it's you know, I don't, uh, I don't make any money doing this, you know. I have a few Patreon supporters, not many, you know, but they are regular. It's about, a Patreon support is about enough to buy Two boxes of nine millimeters a month, you know. Uh, but you know, part of my pay for doing this is I really enjoy doing it. I enjoy showing these guns, and, and uh, it's a lot of fun. And every once in a while, I find one that I decide to make a keeper out of, and this is it. Of course, I have a real affinity for. $100 guns. I looked on Gun Broker. Uh, I found two of these. Uh, both of them are, are buy it now priced or under $150. Uh, this doesn't have a butt plate on. I was going to mention that. This has the standard European practice in gun manufacturer of simply finishing out the end of the stock as opposed to truing it off and putting a butt plate on it. You know, they seem to like that. You say that in high-end English shotguns and high-end European firearms. It's just got a finished <clears throat> end of the stock. It just finished. You know. Well, that's the old ZKM-22 rifle from CZ that I find just to be an outstanding little gun. Um, the value of this gun is somewhere around $125 to $150. Uh, this is making an excellent kid rifle, but... You know, it's made to be a full-size sporting rifle. And, you know, you see these guys in, <clears throat> from Eastern Europe, you know, training rifles and, and these type of sporting rifles, you know, because um, even the most staunch communist regime understood that people were living in outlying areas and they didn't need firearms. So, you know, in typical... Uh, rural home in a Soviet sphere country, you would typically see at least a single shot shotgun or a single shot 22 or, you know, a single shot high powered rifle or, or all of them, you know, depending on the size of the family, the size of the farm and so forth. You know, it was necessary to have uh, some firearms about the place because, you know, Russia's full of wolves and <laughs> it's full of predators and crop destroyers and everything else, you know, so there's definitely a, was a need for, for uh, general use firearms. Well, that's about the size of it at 15 minute video, about to time out, so I guess I better get off of here. 
Old State KM, pretty cool gun. Uh, we'll see you when we see you. Like, take, share, pack, commentate, and subscribe. And leave me a dollar in the Patreon bucket and join the NRA, buddy. We'll see y'all.